Dangerous severe thunderstorms moving across the east and a powerful tropical cyclone expected across Western Australia next week. So there's a lot to get through in the next 17 minutes. We have a strong tropical cyclone now on the forecast cards. I'll be breaking that down in incredible detail. And we're also looking at the current severe thunderstorm situation, which you can see across your screen right now for New South Wales. All of that plus more in this January 7th forecast update brought to you by Force 13 Australia. If you are brand new here, please do consider leaving a like on the video and subscribe to the channel because we're also oh close to 9,000. And uh, leave a comment as well and give us a weather report for your location. But let's get straight into the nationwide picture. You can see hot conditions now extending across Australia's west, right down to Perth, actually, expecting a warm day of 36 degrees Celsius, and also storms across Australia's centre from the uh, Kakadu um, areas in the Northern Territory and then down across the uh, Northern Territory Centre and then through to Central Queensland, Central New South Wales and then down to Victoria, the entirety of Victoria with a chance of severe thunderstorms um, today. We're also looking out for storms and showers across Queensland's coastline and also rain for, uh, south, um, for the South Island of New Zealand and also some showers for Tasmania. So there's a lot happening across Australia over the next two days um, and I'm going to be getting into that in the forecast models later on. Now, now, the tropical cyclone that I just mentioned is a 15% chance of development um, across the waters of the Timor Sea and across Western Australia. Um, it is expected to develop. There's a lot of forecast models supporting it now, um, and it will be around 8 to 10 days. Uh, from now when it spins itself up and there is the chance that this cyclone becomes very very strong indeed so we'll be watching that one very closely on the Force 13 channel. Now taking a look at rainfall nationwide you can see there's significant rainfall occurring across New South Wales right now very heavy rainfall totals uh, those blacks and reds indicating strong thunderstorms which will move through the center of the state today and into Monday morning uh, when they'll start to contract to Sydney and Canberra that sort of area they should move out of Victoria by late to uh, tomorrow afternoon and they'll just exist around and the coastal areas of New South Wales by uh, Tuesday evening. And then we're looking out for a lot of rain across Australia's centre and north, and then a low pressure system moves across towards the New South Wales coastline around uh, Friday and into next weekend. And we're going to be seeing a lot of rainfall from that um, low pressure system across the northern New South Wales coastline and also into Queensland early into next week around Sunday and into Monday, where we could be seeing some places pick up up to 250 millimetres. Uh, in a couple of days. And now zooming into the top end of uh, Western Australia and the Northern Territory, you can see that strong cyclone spinning itself up Monday and into Tuesday next week. And it becomes very strong indeed, up to 950 millibar central pressure, uh, which would be a Category 3 or Category 4 strength on the Australian scale as it impacts uh, Karratha and that sort of area. There's a lot of uncertainty surrounding that forecast, but it is looking more and more likely with a lot more model support. Now temperature for Australia and New Zealand, nothing out of the ordinary except for Western Australia. Australia, which is probably looking at hotter than normal conditions uh, over the next five days or so. In fact, it gets very hot in Perth, 38 degrees Celsius on Monday and into Tuesday. It's going to be a great day for the beach there. Uh, but elsewhere across the nation, the only other especially hot place uh, that I'm seeing is the coastal areas of South Australia, which will be seeing tops of 42 degrees Celsius, which is normal for this time of the year. But we could also be seeing some sub-zero nights, some very icy nights for Tasmania and also parts of the, of the Mount Kosciuszko area and also into New Zealand as well. So it's going to be hot and cold across Australia and New Zealand. Now zooming right in and taking a look at rainfall once again for eastern Australia for the next couple of days, you can see on the eastern will be a forecast, a lot of rainfall expected over the next two days for Victoria and New South Wales, up to 150 millimetres from severe thunderstorms in places before that rainfall contracts to northern New South Wales and southeast Queensland as a result of that low pressure system moving through, which you can see occurring Friday and Saturday next week. And that's going to deliver a lot of rainfall between Coffs Harbour up towards Rockhampton. And once, I, as I said, there will be locations that pick up up to 250 millimetres from this almost rain bomb scenario and isolated locations with up to 350 millimetres. So the risk of flooding remains remains there next week and into uh, next weekend. So let's take a look at those thunderstorms really briefly before I jump over to the next part of the video. You can see strong thunderstorms blowing up across central New South Wales right now. A lot of lightning activity. It is looking very heated there, that's for sure. A lot of thunderstorm activity occurring and it's only going to get worse and conditions will only deteriorate as today moves forward. 
So we're starting things off here with a look at the radar imagery across New South Wales and Victoria. You can already see a lot of rainfall from non-stormy clouds moving through Victoria, Melbourne, and up towards Bendigo, Ballarat, Shepparton, those sort of areas. Um, this rainfall is locally heavy. You can see with the yellows and the oranges, there is some heavy falls in here where we could be seeing places pick up 25 millimetres in a one hour period. So the risk of flash flooding here is there. Um, it's not overly uh, likely at this stage. Oh, it looks like we've just had the entire radar system go out. Okay, we're going to have to switch over to satellite imagery, uh, which gives us still a good idea of these storms. Now, what I'm seeing here with these uh, thunderstorms, uh, this really isolated sort of convective, strong convective activity where you're seeing these thunderstorms blow up really in really isolated spots, these storms are quite small in size, is the risk of supercell thunderstorms forming. Now, supercell thunderstorms are the strongest type of thunderstorms. Uh, they possess the uh, potential to drop giant hailstones, very heavy rainfall, uh, bring destructive winds in excess of 150 kilometers an hour, and also have the potential to drop tornadoes. Now, am I saying these storms are going to drop tornadoes or all of those risks? It's actually possible in some locations as they move through. But the later we get into this afternoon and into this evening, the more likely we're going to see these storms combine into one big squall line. And as you get closer to sort of Dubbo, Parks, uh, that sort of area, even Wagga Wagga even, uh, we're going to set, start to see these storms organise into that said squall line. And then we will see these uh, the risk of very dangerous severe thunderstorms ease, but it's going to become a more widespread situation. Now, as I said in yesterday's video, now the storms in the early afternoon hours, which is right now when this video is being recorded at 2.30 p.m. local time, uh, we're going to be seeing the risk of these storms being um, very isolated and very uh, localised. So the impacts will be localised, which means there will be places that pick up torrential conditions, very strong thunderstorm conditions, and there'll be locations five kilometres down the road that receive absolutely nothing from these storms. But later we get into this afternoon, and the closer you get towards the Great Dividing Range and the coastline, then the more widespread the conditions are. And also the further south you get, the more widespread the conditions are. So don't be bummed out if you get absolutely nothing from these storms, because there are uh, places that won't get any impacts whatsoever from these thunderstorms and then there'll be places that get absolutely hammered. I just thought I should uh, say that so just not to warn everyone of a catastrophic widespread storm situation. Now taking a look at the forecast models we're looking at the Eastern Rubia uh, model right now those ziggy marks indicate thunderstorms on the forecast you can see strong thunderstorms now starting to develop in uh, western Victoria which is where we expected them to start developing about now and they're only going to get stronger as we get into the later evening hours of this afternoon you can see very strong thunderstorms moving across the New South Wales Victoria border and also strong thunderstorms across central New South Wales. They really don't seem to want to move actually. They just get broader and more widespread by the looks of things. Um, which is a scary prospect because once again, if these thunderstorms are slow moving, they're just going to dump st stupid amounts of rainfall. There'll be places that pick up 100 or 150 millimetres in locations that may only receive 250 millimetres of rain in a calendar year. So the risk of flooding and flash flooding and sustained riverine flooding across uh, the Murray-Darling Basin remains very real indeed. And I'm not even going to neglect South Australia as well because there will be places that pick up a significant amount of rainfall over there. Now I'm going to see if the radar imagery is still working. Nope, but we do have a lot of lightning activity starting to develop across central New South Wales. So those thunderstorms, as I've said, are really now starting to get started. And across the Victoria, South Australia border, they're also really starting to get started over there as well. Uh, gee, they are really looking quite gnarly up towards Queensland and uh, the Northern Territory and that sort of area. So yeah, the big news is very strong thunderstorms and a lot of them moving across New South Wales and Queensland at this time. Make sure you're keeping an eye on the radar imagery and keeping an eye on the Bureau of Meteorology for weather warnings and weather updates from them because it is important that you stay up to date and stay safe with them because they'll be bringing you the latest every, I'd imagine, 20 minutes to half an hour on this situation because this is an emergency situation in terms of thunderstorms. We don't see this every week or every month. This is sort of the once in a year thunderstorm emergency that we see across central New South Wales. And as these storms blow across towards Canberra and Sydney tomorrow evening, we could be seeing strong thunderstorms impact those areas as well in already saturated catchments, uh, which will receive a significant amount of rainfall on top of the rainfall that they've already been receiving. And speaking of rainfall, I think it's appropriate we take a look at rainfall accumulation over the next five days from these storms. And yeah, up to 100 millimeters in a lot of locations especially as you get closer to the great dividing range and these thunderstorms become a lot more uh, widespread um, this doesn't really give a full scope of the picture because 
As I did just say, the thunderstorms initially across uh, the more western parts of New South Wales will be a lot more isolated and widespread, so places will pick up a varying, um, a dramatically varying amount of rainfall. Once again, locations that could pick up 50 millimetres and places that pick up nothing. So um, the forecast models don't give us a full scope of uh, the idea of what's going on, but especially as you get closer to the coast and into Victoria, then the rainfall becomes a lot more predictable and a lot more widespread. Melbourne itself picking up up to 70 millimetres of rain, Canberra, what looks to be another 30. Sydney could be picking up 20 to 25 millimetres. And as you get up towards the coast, um, around Coffs Harbour, Lismore, the Gold Coast, you could be seeing up to 20 millimetres. But this looks to be more of a rain threat next week. Now, I've just flicked it over to the 10-day forecast. You can see as this rain bomb that we're expecting to move in from the uh, Coral Sea um, as I change topic here, you can see a lot of rainfall expected to move in from the Coral Sea from these slow moving uh, easterly winds that then just back this rainfall up against the coastline. And we could be seeing these thunderstorms drop tremendous amounts of rainfall uh, Saturday, Sunday and into Monday next week as well. So we're looking at rainfall accumulation probably at around that two to 300 millimetre mark around the Brisbane City area, Gold Coast and Mount Tambourine, that sort of area. We could be seeing a significant amount of rainfall next weekend and into very early next week. Week. Now, on the topic of rainfall accumulation, it's going to be a pretty wet week for a lot of Australia. There's rainfall across Western Australia, Central Australia, South Australia, you name it, there's a lot of rainfall, and it looks like the only locations that miss out is Western Australia, actually. But what I do want to look at now is the tropics, because there is two tropical cyclones possible and maybe one tropical cyclone expected. And this is where I'm going to fl uh, flip it over to the Bureau of Meteorology's own forecast model because that's the forecast model expecting these cyclones. And I believe it's doing a good job at initialising them as well. Now, as I said yesterday, as the MJO phase, um, which is currently located over tropical Africa, moves across the Indian Ocean, it's going to drive tropical cyclone activity there. And by the time it gets itself over Australia by early next week, we're going to be seeing a... Um, much increased amount of tropical activity and tropical moisture and the monsoon trough should definitely be peaking at around that time when we will be seeing these tropical cyclones start to form and you can already see tropical lows next Thursday and into Friday starting to develop across the top end of Western Australia in the Kimberley region and also in the Gulf of Carpentaria by the looks of things and if I start playing this through keeping track of time in the bottom part of your screen Saturday next week Saturday the 13th we're seeing a defined low pressure system spin itself up um, north of Kalumbaroo, Kununurra, that sort of area, Western Australia, very remote part of the state, might I add. And this cyclone does get quite strong quite fast, rapidly intensifying into Sunday and into Monday and becoming a Category 3 severe tropical cyclone early Monday morning with sustained winds of around what looks to be about 70 knots or so, 65 knots. And we also see this tropical low here developing around Groot Island. And yeah, it spins itself up nicely. It might become a very brief, weak cyclone. And as it gets around into Tuesday, it sort of bounces its Itself back over water on or in the Gulf of Carpentaria and yeah it's a cyclone at that point as well as per the access forecast but I'm not going to ignore the elephant in the room the strong cyclone here expected to impact Western Australia a category three maybe even a category four cyclone by the looks of things it might peak very briefly as a 80 knot category four sort of system um, maybe on Wednesday, uh, Monday or into Tuesday or even Wednesday actually but what's worrying me is just how deep the pressure is on this cyclone 960 950 millibars is quite a strong cyclone um, yeah a very significant storm that's for sure and now I don't believe any other forecast models really have it getting that strong the Eastern Blue Earth still supports a cyclone moving into the Northern Territory around Saturday or into Sunday next week but the GFS is calling for nothing and I don't think the Icon model is calling for much either apart from a really broad tropical low so there's not too much model support but there's a lot more forecast models jumping on board with this which means I can say with greater certainty that we can be expecting the possibility of at least one tropical cyclone up in the Timor Sea or into the Indian Ocean um, offshore from Western Australia. Now rainfall tells a bit of a different story here. I'm seeing a lot of rainfall on the northern side so it's a very intense tropical cycle in terms of thunderstorm activity but it looks like it's struggling with dry air or wind shear at this time which means the cyclone will be on a weakening trend as it approaches Western Australia, Karratha, Port Hedland, that sort of area where if I was to extrapolate its track it might just brush the coast and then very much rapidly weaken off which is good news. So what I'm saying with that is I'm not expecting a strong or significant 
significant tropical cyclone landfall. Certainly nothing record strong that they've never seen before up there. But with all tropical cyclones that form across Western Australia, we're expecting a lot of thunderstorm activity across Western Australia's red centre, extending down to Perth, which means hot conditions, very hot weather across Western Australia. Look at that, 40 degree days, very widespread um, into Monday. That's at 5 p.m., mind you. So it's going to be a blistering hot day next Tuesday if this cyclone is to materialise very, very hot conditions, actually 43 degrees just outside of Perth in Jinjin. So yeah, we'll be watching this forecast very closely because if this cyclone materializes, it is going to be a scorcher across Western Australia, maybe the hottest week of the year. Um, across that area. So if you are from Perth, if you're a Perth or Western Australia viewer, watch this forecast very closely and stay tuned with the Force 13 AU channel because it is a very important forecast uh, in terms of the weather driver across Western Australia. But apart from that, I'm not seeing anything too crazy nationwide. In fact, I have just cited a tropical low that I didn't see earlier. So three tropical lows across the Australian region here. This is this one in the Solomon Sea, but this one's very weak. This one's probably not even be, uh, qualifying as a designated tropical low. But what I'm seeing here is this tropical low driving the easterly winds across the tropical coral sea. And we're just going to see more and more rainfall added uh, to the ga gauges around uh, Queensland and into uh, Brisbane and that sort of areas. But definitely a lot of rainfall expected across the Australian nation over the next 10 days uh, with this tropical pattern that we're expecting. As I said, um, as, and as I explained yesterday, with this MJO, which is going to drive this tropical activity and this tropical moisture across the northern regions of Western Australia. So if you missed the explanation of that, I recommend going and watching the video yesterday. It was a really good one. Um, but you can see, once again, just a lot of rainfall expected, a lot of stormy conditions. The weather is going to be very turbulent nationwide. Wide, and we will be bringing you the latest updates on the AU channel, so make sure you are subscribed and leave a like on the video while you're at it. And please do consider leaving me a weather report of your location, especially if you are being impacted by these thunderstorms across New South Wales in the comment section down below. I can't wait to read all of them uh, because that really, it does give us a great idea of what the weather is nationwide. And I want to see if you uh, get impacted by these thunderstorms or if you do miss them because, as I said, these thunderstorms will be hit and miss. So yeah, wrapping it up, cyclone activity across the north, thunderstorm activity across the southeast, and hot weather across the southwest over the next 10 days. Um, so yeah, a lot is going on, that's for sure. But on that note, I'm going to leave it at that. Thank you so much for watching the video to this um, point. If you did enjoy it, please do consider subscribing and leave a like on the video while you're at it. Um, once again, we're very close to 9,000 subscribers, and I appreciate the support so much over the past month. It really does mean a lot to me. But yeah, if you did enjoy it, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye. Thank you for watching our content this update. If you enjoyed it, be sure to subscribe to get more updates covering all things weather and geophysics impacting Australia and the Oceania region. Subscribe to our other channels for more content from across the network and be sure to check out our website where you can find free access to floater and radar imagery and articles on everything weather and much more. If you wish to support us directly, you can purchase some of our merchandise. We have a wide variety of clothing and homeware. Or you could become an ultimate fan, which is the best way to directly support us, granting you some sweet perks and offers, including features in our custom storm animations, live streams, and much more.